Hey USG, welcome back to the kitchen. So we are on an, an upward spiral of sourdough discard baking. So today we are doing sourdough discard cinnamon rolls. So hopefully this turns out for us because if it doesn't then guess what? You're not seeing this video. So uh, I got this off of TikTok because they have an amazing arsenal of recipes for discard. So this one I am pulling off of this Jess Cooks. Um, I'll put it in the uh, description. If I can tag her, I will. If I can't, then I'll just put the name. Uh, the ingredients are as follows if I tweak something then obviously this is where I will let you know it is calling for one cup of non-dairy milk I'm using milk one percent one and a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast I have that somewhere one quarter cup of granulated sugar, one egg lightly beaten at room temperature, 200 grams, or if you want it in, in cup form, it's saying about three quarter cups of sourdough discard that's at room temperature. Four and a half cups of all purpose flour, mine's on bleach, she's not specifying. Three quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm using Red Bin Real uh, salt. That's fine sea salt. Three tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted and cooled. Mine is a blue bonnet margarine, and I think is salted. So at this point, I probably might just not put my salt since I'm using salted butter. So. That's also, you know, how I kind of make these recipes mine. So that's going to be for the actual dough. We are going to be using my KitchenAid stand mixer for this. In her directions, it does say that you can mix this by hand if you want to. My PSA, psoriatic arthritis, is not going to allow me to do that for you know, maybe the eight to 15 minutes that you have to do this. Now I've been having a little bit of an issue with my KitchenAid stand mixer. The last time I made bread, um, my bowl was just disconnecting from the actual stand and causing a ruckus. So hopefully it doesn't do this for this recipe. We will see if not, I'll have my husband look into it. Now for the filling for the cinnamon rolls, it is requiring a quarter cup of unsalted butter. Again, mine is salted. A quarter cup of brown sugar. I am using a light uh, packed brown sugar. A quarter cup of raisin. This is optional. So since it's optional, I'm not using it. My family here does not fancy raisins. I actually like raisins, but I don't like raisins that are cooked into baked goods. I just like to eat them regular. And two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Um, I'm probably going to go a little heavier on the cinnamon, to be honest. I'm just going to measure that with my heart. Now, after all of this is probably baking, you're going to want a frosting, obviously. So for the frosting, she is saying three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Yet again, mine's is salted. I'm using what I have on hand. I always buy salted butter. Maybe when I go to the supermarket the next time, since it is going to be baking season, we are in November. Hello, Thanksgiving is around the corner. I might pick up unsalted butter, you know, for the future. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt. I might not do that since my butter is salted. One and a half cups of confectionate uh, sugar. You want to sift that. I might do that because mine is a little bit on the balled up side. And one to two tablespoons of non-dairy milk. And again, my milk is dairy and it's 1%. So those are your in ingredients. We are going to move forward with um, processing all of this and the instructions. Our first instructions is obviously to 
bloom the yeast because that's exactly what we need first so i'm going to give you the instructions right now before we flip you guys around and get you know into the thick of it we are going to be warming the milk it should not boil i'm going to put it straight up in the microwave for you guys that don't like i guess you know the radiation or whatnot i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole you can do it in the stove top just make sure you don't boil it um we're going to add that to the bowl that I have here, which is going to be the one that attaches to my stand uh, mixer because why dirty an extra bowl? I mean, even though I have a whole arsenal here of bowls that we're going to be using, um, <laughs> I'm going to add it to my stand mixer bowl and we are going to be um, putting our yeast in there. Let it sit for five minutes, which is the, you know, I guess normal rule. Let it uh, foam up and all that stuff or come to bloom. And then we will move forward with the rest of the instructions. So let me go ahead and do that off camera because you've guys seen me do that for other recipes. And we will move on to the next instruction after that. All right. So I went ahead and warmed up my milk. It took about a minute in the microwave. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my bowl right here. And this is where the dishes start piling up. So it's perfect that I literally do these recipes in front of my sink. So I can just literally just start putting stuff in there. And then off the scenes, I just like, you know, <laughs> in between clean up dishes. We're going to add our yeast onto this warm milk. So it's calling for a teaspoon and a quarter. So we're going to go ahead and add that right in and I have a fork ready to mix it in give that a good little mix mix So it's well incorporated. I have my iPad open, so I'm going to just tell her to set a timer for five minutes. Hey, Siri, timer for five minutes. Five minutes starting now. All right, so we're going to set this to the side, and we're going to continue with the rest. All right, so as we're waiting for that, I went ahead and took three tablespoons of a butter and I melted that in the microwave. And here it is in a one pint mason jar. We're waiting for that to cool down. We have our one egg right here and we are supposed to beat this just lightly. So I guess when we are ready to incorporate everything into our milk and yeast, I guess it's, you know, broken down just a little bit because right now we are still waiting for our yeast to uh, bloom or foam up so that's going to be our next step starting to add everything into our bowl over here so we're still just in the waiting process but those are the two things that I can go ahead and do while I wait for this over here so Still waiting, no action yet, but I'll bring you back once we're ready. All right, so this is what it's looking like. I moved it around a little bit. I saw it bloom, float up to the top. So now we are going to dump things in here. We're going to start off with the quarter cup of sugar. So here is my quarter cup. Got a little lump lump there. Get that out. Just a little bit more. Perfect. So that's going to go right in there. Then goes in the egg. Make sure you get all of it. 
Then goes the sourdough discard. So we need the kitchen scale for this one. And it says 200 grams, about three quarter cup. Um, I'm just going to go with the kitchen scale. So we turned it on. Let's zero it out. Here's my discard. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And, oh, she smells sour. And she's, oh, this one's thick, thick. Let me see if I could get one that's a little looser consistency. Give me a second. All right, this one's a little looser. So, we need 200 grams right now. All right, that's 199 and with whatever I have on my spatula, should make it even. So that's going to go in as well. Make sure you get all of it. Remember what I tell you guys. Don't leave nothing behind. <laughs> all right. And the last thing before we put it in the mixer is four and a half cups of flour. So let me get a spatula so we can level it out. And it's all purpose flour that I'm using here. Unbleached. Right, level it out, so that's one. That's two. I'm not packing it down at all. That's three. That is four. This scoop lives in my flour, so, and this one, is the half. Perfect. So now we are at the KitchenAid stand mixer. We have the dough hook attached here we went and locked it so we are going to mix it at low until it starts um, combining into a nice little ball dough <laughs> or dough ball um, and at that point we're also going to start incorporating our butter that we have here you know in case if it doesn't have enough liquid we're also going to be doing some milk but we'll do that as we go so let's start mixing i'm going to put it at one All right, so, so far it looks really decent. You can smell that discard. It smells really sour. Um, so hopefully <laughs> it doesn't, you know, shine through. We'll see what happens. I think I'm going to start adding some of the butter. Thank <laughs> you. 
so I finished adding all the butter and it did become sticky in consistency but what I did was I raised it to a level number two and it spins a little bit more and it ended up picking everything up from the bowl on the side. So I'm not gonna add any more flour or any milk or anything. I think the dough bowl looks really, really good. So I'm gonna let it spin at level number two for a little bit longer and then we're gonna go ahead and remove it and move on to the next step. All right, I am satisfied with where it's at. We are going to go ahead and take it off the hook. Looks really good. It's not sticky at all. It's perfect. There we go. So that's what it's looking like. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and grease up this bowl. I'm gonna be using just um, extra virgin olive oil, just you know, from one in the can. I'm just gonna spray it. So that's what I use to spray right in there. And we're just gonna go ahead and taste out our which is kindly sticking to <laughs> her bow so that's what she's looking like she looks really pretty and it's really soft she smells like sourdough I'm not mad at it so I'm just you know tucking her a little bit just you know giving her a little shake nobody's telling me to do that um, and I'm just gonna put her right here in the middle nuzzle her in something wants to tell me just to just give her a little spray spray on the top and she's gonna rest in here we're gonna put some i had ordered those plastic covers on top um but the ones that i ordered i don't like them um they're okay but they're too small for this for this bowl in particular so we're just gonna put some cling over this bowl because we don't want this to dry out and we also want to just retain some heat so this is going to sit in here for 60 to 90 minutes about an hour and a half so it does it's i think it's going to be its first rise And at that point, we will come back and we will work with it. Now, if you want to follow the recipe to a T, that's what it's going to look like. If you want to follow the recipe to a T, at this point, you will soak your raisins and do all that good stuff. I will um, look at the recipe to give you the full instructions for that. So at this point, while you wait for that, you can um, soak your raisins in warm water and that will help them, you know, plump up before you actually, you know, put them into the cinnamon and um, brown sugar that you will incorporate into this once you roll out your dough. So, you know, that's what you will be doing while you wait for this to uh, rise. But I will not be doing that, so I will be doing other stuff <laughs> while I wait for this to rise. So I will be seeing you guys in about 90 minutes, which for you guys, it will be a flash because that's the magic of YouTube. So BRB. All right, so we are back. And I've done a bunch of stuff while I've been waiting for this to rise, and it has been a little over the 90 minutes but I think we are okay so we're gonna go ahead and remove the plastic because that's no longer needed um, it's soft so let's go ahead and punch it down 
so we can deflate it we are going to go ahead and flower up our area right here in the interim before instead of you know well while i cooked <laughs> i also went ahead and mixed up our filling i guess for the cinnamon roll which was half a cup of brown sugar i did the light pack brown sugar and uh two tablespoons of cinnamon i was gonna add a little bit more but actually once i went ahead and mixed it in and made it all nice and soft it smells amazing and i think it's enough if i put more i think it's going to be too powerful so i'm going to actually follow the ingredients and be mindful so what we're going to go ahead and do now is try to roll this out so my surface here is nice and clean um it says rectangle <laughs> i'm going to try my best i'm not going to sit here and lie so let's go ahead and flour our surface and put a little bit of flour here on our rolling pin I haven't used this in a while. So let's see how my skills are. So we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of just our King Arthur all purpose flour right now because I went ahead and put the other one away and I just don't wanna go through the trouble of going to get that. Now I have a, you know, one of those mats, like silicone mats that you put here on your surface. I ordered it from Amazon, it just hasn't gotten here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick some of that up, some of the flour up from my surface and just put it on a pin as well. All right, I'm gonna move the sugar over here because we don't need it yet, just to get it out of my way. So I think we have enough surface here that we should be able to get a decent size rectangle, hopefully. So let's go ahead and dump it right in there. It has a bit of a nice oil to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some flour on the top as well. on the other side as well. All right, just manipulate it a little bit with my hands. It's really soft. In the recipe, it doesn't say like the thickness. So we're just gonna rock and roll. It's really easy. I'm not putting much pressure to roll it out, so. If this tastes good, I'm definitely going to keep it in my recipe book. <laughs> and might I say, my son loves the cinnamon rolls. The cinnamon bun is one of the things that we love to get when we're at the mall. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that this tastes anything like cinnamon buns, but... Nothing like, you know, making stuff at home. So, I know I can't flip this, but I'm gonna try to manipulate because over here is getting a little bunchy bunchy. So I'm gonna try to manipulate it this way. So I can get my rectangle. So far, so good, guys.
okay. Um, seems to be in nice thickness. I don't know once it comes to, you know, the inches or none of that stuff, but I think we're at a good space. So right now you're supposed to put butter on it. So I have butter here that has been out of the fridge for a very long time. Um, I think I'm going to get a spatula or spurtle to just help me evenly coat this around. All right, so I have my spatula here. The spatula gets love around here. And I think I'm just gonna, yep, this will work. I'm just gonna do one of these. Because that's what I saw them do on TikTok. So I'm just going to do the same. I'm literally just going to just dump it. I feel like it's just like you're in art class. And you're painting. <laughs> so she didn't say like, you know, how many teaspoons of butter to put on it. So, mind you, I feel like I'm covering a decent surface. I think there was like two or two and a half teaspoons left in here. And I feel like I'm covering a decent surface. Maybe with just one more teaspoon. I mean, tablespoon, guys, tablespoons, right? Yes, tablespoons. Uh, maybe with just one more tablespoon, I might be able to finish, or I might not need it. Let's see. Because it seems like I'm getting to the edge over here with just the, these three tablespoons. Yeah, I think I'm good with what was here. And the dough is uh, kind of stretching back. It's like kind of flexing back so you can see it's receding. I'm making a mess, but I love making a mess in the kitchen, especially when I'm cooking for my family. So there's nothing wrong with that. All right, so at this point, once you have the butter evenly spread out, now you're gonna come in and I'm gonna get rid of the spoon. This is one of the recipes that you get your hands dirty. I mean, they're not that bad, right? <laughs> so you're gonna come in with your sugar and cinnamon mixture and mine's is nicely incorporated and you're just gonna spread it. Evenly spread it all over. I am just waiting. I am salivating <laughs> as I sit here and do this. Now this is gonna be dessert for my family for today. I already have dinner on the stove and in the oven. So I told my husband that I'm making this. I don't think my son knows. So it'll be a surprise. My daughter's currently working. So she just comes home to whatever I make. <laughs> and she gets excited. Alright, so. I'm getting a nice layer, nice coverage. On everything. Can you see that, guys? Oh my god. I wish you guys were here to smell. Oh. Alright, so I used everything. You're supposed to. <laughs> Alright, so now 
my challenge is gonna be rolling this up. Look at my hands, now I got my hands dirty. So my challenge is gonna be rolling everything up um, and cutting it. Uh, she cuts hers with a dental floss that's unflavored. Um, I don't own dental floss. <laughs> so yeah, all right, so one thing at a time, right? So we're going to start with the edge here that is towards me and we're going to move away and we're going to try to keep it as tight as possible. And it's already proving to be challenging. <laughs> I think the the beginning is challenging once it gets nice and bulky like this part here is good because I think I got a lot of flour on that side and I can maneuver it much much better all right it's getting tighter Look at this, guys. I'm doing it. <laughs> I feel like a kid that's in art class and is very happy to show their parents when they get home their art project. All right, now it's like really, really away from me. All right. So now I'm going to try to just button this up and try to bring it towards me. I'm going to treat it like a bread here and just pinch these. Let me see if I can shimmy it towards me. There we go. Let's work together. All right. I don't think in the recipe it says anything about pinching the seams, but... This is me just learning things right now. I'm not gonna pinch obviously the corners because it's like, you know, who does that? But um, you want those corners open, but I'm pinching these seams right here. It's like sewing or crocheting. Definitely used to that. I crocheted blankets and I know what that, what that is about. All right, so I'm gonna grease a nine by 10 because that's what I have. This is supposed to be about 12 cinnamon rolls, I think, 12 to 15 servings. Um, I guess it depends on how big you cut them. So I am going to grease a nine by 10. I mean, a nine by 13, I think that's what it is. And I'm gonna start cutting. Give me a second, let me go get my dish. All right, so I have my vessel right here. This is what we're using. Greased it with some Pam butter flavor because that's what I want. <laughs> and I'm gonna be using this to cut. Yeah, it was either this or a knife. Um, so hopefully this is sharp enough. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. So we can start over here. Um, she really doesn't say like for the thickness, how thick, so it's up to you. But we are going to cut them out because we need to do a second rise. So we're starting over here. Um, I'm gonna go straight down. She doesn't say anything about like tucking or anything, but look at the inside, that's the way it looks. And I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, sit it right there. I'll show you the dish once it's done. So let me finish cutting this. Actually, let me show you just a few more. It's actually, I thought it was going to like really squish it really bad, but it's not doing that. So I'm assuming if you do like a blunt, like straight down really quick, it's like a, you know, karate chop, like a haya. <laughs> it does it really quick. So... That's one side, 
This is the side that I cut. It looks like a rose. So one more. And you know, they get pretty thick as we go down. This is number three. One side, that's the other. And I think I'm going to do three per row. Let me finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like in the dish. All right, guys, so this is what they look like. They're so cute. Uh, so we ended up with three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I hope that's enough space for them to expand. We have to leave them here for another 30 to 45 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and cover them again with some cling because they have to go for their second rise. And then once they are done with that, I'll bring you guys back just to show you how they rose. But after they're done rising, they're gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes or until about golden brown on the top. And at that point, while they're cooling, we will go ahead and start doing the icing that goes with them. But at this point, we are done with them and they will do their second rise. So I'll bring you back when they have completed that. We'll see you then. All right, so it's been an hour, about, it was supposed to be 45, but we're cooking, we're making bread, we're doing it all today. I'm exhausted. Um, dishes, like I was to turn you guys around and show you, because my dishwasher is a little finicky right now, so we're like hand washing, whatever. So it's, it's, it's a crap show around here. So anyways. They have doubled and grown and all that good stuff. And this sugar looks ooey and gooey. And just look at that the nice little close up shot. Oh my god, I'm gonna take a picture of this. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I put my nose to that and it smells amazing. My son actually came in here because he came to snack. Uh, he's eating some pineapples. And he actually took a peek of it and he was like, oh my God, cinnamon rolls. And um, yeah, these things look amazing. So my dinner's almost done. I'm making baked chicken, chicken legs. And I just put barbecue sauce on them and it's almost done. And the oven's already at 350 because obviously I'm baking dinner. So I'm going to be putting this in there. Um, I think I'm going to put my bread in there as well and see if I can get a two for one. Hopefully that's okay because they both go in for about 30 minutes. So let's see what happens. So this is what they're looking for. 350 like I already stated for uh, 350 degrees in the oven for 30 minutes or until golden brown. And um, then we're going to pull them out and as they cool we're going to go ahead and make the icing which is the last step this has been a labor of love and i am telling you i hope that we love them um if we do love them i'm in trouble because i have to actually replicate this who knows how many times because this family can go through cinnamon rolls like it's nobody's business now they look like they're going to be large and in charge especially everything from here so about here minus these little ones these little ones will probably be for my daughter um i wish i had pecans i don't have pecans i have walnuts and we do have caramel so if they're delicious we're definitely gonna try to replicate uh cinnabon cinnabon so we'll see so let's take my chicken out and let's put these guys in the oven so I lost the clip of making the icing. Here is the final reveal of the product. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.